This time we're going to talk about the regions of the interior abdominal wall. So first of all we're going to draw a frontal view of the uh, human body. So this is the chest area, this is the abdomen, and let's say this is the xiphoid process, the tip of the, the sternum. And so here we have the, the thoracic area, this is the ribcage, and this is the abdomen. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the surface anatomy. The most important muscle in this aspect is rectus abdominis. So rectus abdominis is the muscle which is found in the in midline or the, the metal of the um, uh, interior abdominal wall. This is the muscle which is involved in the six packs and stuff. So the line that connects between the two uh, parts of the muscle bilaterally, this line is called the linea alba. So it's called linea alba or the white line. And on both sides of the muscle, we have another line. So on each side, we have a line, which is called the semi-lunar line. So this is the um, important part of the surface anatomy of the anterior abdominal wall, the rectus abdominis muscle. And the linea alba is considered a weak point uh, in this um, aspect. So it can be affected uh, through hernias and so on. Now, how do we define the regions of the uh, interior abdominal wall? We draw lines. And these lines are going to pass through certain points that we need to know because this process is important in radiology and so on in order to um, define the places of organs let's say inside the abdominal uh, cavity physiologically so we know this organ is found in this region and so on the first line uh, is a horizontal line so we're going to draw a horizontal line passing through the tenth rib the tenth rib and this line will be called subcostal. So this is a subcostal line. The second line is a line called intertubicular line or transpyloric line. So around here we have the uh, anterior iliac spine and here we have the tubercle the pubic tubercle and here we have the pubic symphysis around here so there is a very important ligament that connects between these two points of course on both sides it's called the inguinal ligament inguinal ligament this ligament is very very important because it's involved in the formation of a canal called the inguinal canal through which a lot of important structures path and through which this is a very very important structure uh, because it contributes in the formation of the inguinal canal through which a lot of important structures pass from the abdominal wall um, to the um, lower limb and to the genitals and so on and it's also involved in the formation of hernias so this is a very very important structure so uh, what we were saying we were saying that the second line is called the intertubicular line because it passes there we said that this is the um, 
pubic tubercle and this is the anterior iliac spine so it passes between the two points it's called inter tubercular line and at the same time this line is called transpyloric whenever we hear pyloric we know that this is related to the pylorus of the stomach so Transpyloric means that it passes through the pylorus of the stomach, it passes through the fundus of the gallbladder. Uh, we have also uh, the beginning of the duodenum, the hyla of the kidney. So if the kidneys are situated around this point, this is the hilum around here, it passes through the hilum of each kidney. Uh, we also have the neck and the body of the pancreas and so on. So this line crosses all of these uh, features and it also passes through L1 vertebra. So this is the second line. And then we have two vertical lines which are the mid-clavicular lines. So we have two mid-clavicular lines, they're called mid-clavicular because they start from the midpoint of the clavicle and then they go downwards, so mid-clavicular. So these four lines, the two horizontal and the two vertical, will divide the, abdo the anterior abdominal wall into nine squares or nine regions, let's say. Right, middle and left. The two upper regions, they're called right and left hypochondriac regions. And the two lower regions are called right and left inguinal regions. Right and left inguinal regions. And the two in the middle, they're called right and left lumbar regions. So these are lumbar regions. And on the midline, we have three regions. Let's um, name them according to the um, stomach. We have the stomach, and this will be above the stomach. It will be epigastric. And this one will be hypogastric. Hypogastric. And it's these three regions are more around like here. Not that low. Around here. And the metal region, as if we have the umb umbilicus here, this will be the umbilical region. So these are the regions of the anterior abdominal wall. Uh, this is it for today and the next time we're going to talk about the structure of the anterior abdominal wall concerning the, uh, the skin, the muscles and uh, so on. So until then I thank you for watching and see you.